Are you in need of a money makeover? What can you do differently in 2024 to get your financial goals on track again? We're not talking here about short-lived New Year's resolutions that always amount to nothing. We're talking about sustainable financial progress, developing lasting habits, repairing your relationship with money, and building a new financial reality for yourself. One where your budget is under control, you've got a proper emergency fund, and you are investing each and every month. In this video, we're going to be discussing five key points to set yourself on a path to a more prosperous 2024 and a more certain long-term financial future. Be sure to stick around till the end for some practical tips on how to make extra money, cut costs, get your budget under control, and start saving money. But we'd like to start off by discussing a big picture issue. In fact, it's an incredibly important issue which most people completely overlook. And that is coming to the realization that your money itself is actively working against you. In other words, the value of the money that most people use, like rands, dollars or pounds, is quickly decreasing due to inflation. The 100 rand note in your wallet is becoming worth less and less with each passing day. And when you understand this, you quickly realize that you simply cannot afford to do nothing. You cannot afford to not think about your finances or plan for the future. Because if you do nothing, you'll get poorer over time as the purchasing power of your salary drops. If you do nothing, your budget will get tighter with each passing day and your ability to save will become more and more difficult. Most of us are familiar with the concept of the rat race, a popular term used to describe our never-ending struggle to get ahead financially. Like a rat running on a wheel and not actually getting anywhere, so too do we find ourselves in the same situation. Working hard but never really having anything more to show for it. And because the money is working against us, continually losing value, we actually have to run faster and faster each year just to stay in the same place. If we don't work harder or earn more money, we're forced into debt to pay the bills and survive. Or alternatively, we're forced to downscale the quality of our lifestyle. And that's the key takeaway here. Understanding that our money is working against us incentivizes us to get our money situation under control. It creates an urgency to do something. Because in order to get ahead financially, we simply must face this difficult reality and take preventative action as soon as possible. The second key point to a more prosperous 2024 is to review your relationship with money. We speak to a lot of people about money and a recurring trend that we see is that most people tend to think that they are bad with money. And because they think they're bad with money, they tend to shy away from financial conversations or often even avoid thinking about their own money matters. It goes without saying that this is a pretty vulnerable spot to find yourself in. Because if you're constantly avoiding the topic of money due to some misguided belief or feeling that you may have, it's going to be pretty impossible to achieve any form of financial success in the long run. You're essentially a passenger in a moving vehicle without the driver. The car is driving you, and that's never going to end well. So here's what we'd like you to do. Stop telling yourself that you're bad with money. The reality is that anyone can be good with money. You don't need to be an accountant or financial planner. You don't need to have studied finance at a university or have some fancy formal training. The difference between someone who claims to be bad with money versus someone who is good with money ultimately comes down to the attitude they have towards their money. Being bad with money means burying your head in the sand, allowing yourself to become disconnected from your financial reality and making financial decisions based on impulse. If you only think short term and you never plan ahead, of course you're going to be bad with money. Being good with money, when it comes down to it, simply means prioritizing your future financial needs over your short-term financial wants. It means thinking before spending, making time to plan ahead, and putting in some effort to improve your financial knowledge. You can see why the people we consider to be good with money often have more money. Because they put in the effort to plan for and prioritize the future, which means saving and investing as much of their money as they can. So as you can see, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to be good with money. There is no secret formula. If you want to be better with money, start thinking about your money. Start planning for your future. And stop being a passenger. Stop spending without concern for tomorrow. Get in the driving seat and take control of your financial future. So what does this look like from a practical perspective? Where do you start? Well, the best place to start is by taking stock of your current situation. You need to become connected to your financial reality. No more out of sight, out of mind. The reality is what it is and we must first confront it before we can change it. So we want you to do three things. First, make a list of all your debt, including the type of debt, the amount outstanding, the remaining term, and the interest rate you're paying. This includes credit card debt and store accounts. Second, create a list of all your assets. 
cash, property, pension funds, shares, your car, furniture, everything. And then lastly, get a copy of the latest three months bank statements on your transactional accounts. That includes your credit card statements. What you want to do is spend a few minutes carefully going through all your bank statements. Often we become disconnected from our spending behaviors because we simply swipe away on a day-to-day -day basis, never reflecting on the bigger picture. So this exercise should give you some great insight into your spending habits and where exactly your money is going. Now to help make sense of all this information, you really should create a budget. We've created a short budgeting series to help guide you through the budgeting process. And we even give you a free budget template to get started. Check the video out here. The fourth step is to take action. Actually implement the changes necessary to give your finances a makeover. The goal here is to create free cash flow or disposable income. In other words, you want your expenses to be less than your income so you can actually save money each month. Here's a few practical things you can do right away. One of the quickest ways to free up your budget is to pay off expensive short-term debt. So this should be your priority. You should also try to negotiate your interest rate on all your debt. You can often secure better deals on your loans if you shop around. Simply phone your bank and ask them if they are able to lower your interest rate. And if they're not willing to, call other banks and ask them if they can beat your current interest rate. This works more often than you think. You may want to consider debt consolidation, which will allow you to package all your short-term debt into a single debt product at a better rate. Again, speak to a few different banks to get the best offer. But this can really help with quickly freeing up your budget. The insurance industry is very competitive, so it often pays to shop around, and you generally get a much better rate if you use the same insurer for all your insurance needs. After reviewing your bank statements, you may find an old debit order or subscription service that you no longer use. Be sure to cancel these immediately. Do you have any expensive habits you can cut back on? Your bank statement review should have been helpful in identifying these. Lifestyle habits can really add up, and if you're serious about a financial makeover, you may need to make some sacrifices here in the short term. If you have any old furniture, unused equipment or other assets, you may want to consider selling it for a short-term capital injection. Use this capital to pay down debt and free up more monthly cash flow. Now if these steps aren't enough to bring your budget in line, you may need to take more drastic steps such as moving to a cheaper home, owning a more affordable car or cutting out all forms of luxury expenditure. And of course, earning additional income through a side project should be prioritized. Now we have a powerful income strategy toolkit we've created which gives you tons of creative ideas for earning additional income. Click on the link in the description if you'd like to check that out. But remember that the point of this exercise is to bring down your monthly expenses to below your earnings and keep them there so that you can save as much money as possible each and every month. And in order to do this in a sustainable way, you're going to need to stay connected to your finances by reviewing them on an ongoing basis, not just doing it once off for this exercise. At minimum, you need to have a check-in with your finances on a weekly basis. So set a reminder on your calendar for one night a week. The more disciplined you are, the more sustained success you will have with your makeover. So to recap, we know that our money is becoming worth less and less over time. And this knowledge motivates us to get our financial life in order ASAP. We are no longer hiding behind the excuse that we are bad with money. We are committed to spending more time thinking about our money and more time planning ahead. Our long-term financial health must be prioritized at all costs. We've confronted our financial reality, no matter how scary it might be, by looking through our bank statements and listing our assets and liabilities. We've taken action to cut down our costs as best as we can and increase our income with a side project. Great, we've now given ourselves the best possible chance to maximize our monthly savings. And this is the fifth and final step, to prioritize saving money each and every month, even if it's only 100 Rand to begin with. Once you've developed a good savings habit and built a sizable emergency fund, you can then start to invest more aggressively. But until then, you may want to prioritize saving and building your emergency fund. There's a powerful saving strategy called pay yourself first, which we highly recommend. It's really simple, but it's incredibly effective. All you have to do is set up a separate savings account and on payday, transfer the amount you want to save out of your main account into your savings account. This works best if you set up an automated payment or debit order a day or two after payday, so that your savings are automatically taken care of even before your usual monthly debit orders are paid. Of course, if you have the ability and opportunity to, you should explore other ways to earn income, whether that be through a side hustle, a promotion, or starting a business. All of these things will accelerate your ability to save and therefore give you even greater financial certainty in future. 
Now to help you get started with your savings journey, we're giving away 200 Rand free Bitcoin if you sign up to Luno using our referral code. All you have to do is buy 500 Rand worth of Bitcoin and your 200 Rand free Bitcoin will be deposited into your account within 30 days. And yes, you can sell it or withdraw it immediately thereafter if you want, but we strongly recommend holding onto it for a while. So click the link below to get your 200 Rand free Bitcoin. And if you want more information on savings accounts and which account offers the highest return in South Africa, watch this video now. See you there.